Hi, welcome back. All right, so as you might notice, I've gone through and added some of the other stickings in for the rest of the piece. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about technique text and ways to use this in the score and the way it can affect the playback of your score. Uh, we'll be using the snare line as the example for this particular lesson. However, a lot of this stuff will apply to uh, other instruments in virtual drumline. Okay, so uh, one cool thing about at least the snare line instrument in VDL is the fact that not only do they record the standard center hits, but they also recorded uh, edge sounds as well as um, halfway sounds. And a lot of them, you know, like the buzzes, crushes, uh, various other things, they recorded in all three zones. So you, it's pretty cool that you have those at your disposal. Um, so uh, let's say that we want this guy here at the beginning or these, this group of people, uh, rather whoever's going to be playing this part, to be playing at the edge. Rather, you, right now you can hear it's just a standard center hit. Let's say we want them playing, I don't know, at the edge instead. First we'll come up to create, text, technique, or we could press command T, then type edge. If you double escape, uh, let's go ahead and add in a center text as well. This way uh, you can actually hear the difference, but maybe this is, we just want them to play on the edge, be really soft at the beginning, and then just, you know, pop uh, on count three. So I'm going to hit command T and type center. And just, just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and make this halfway. So just to kind of see both methods again, create text. Technique text, halfway, double escape. All right, so let's give it a listen. So you can actually hear all three zones. Now what's actually happening here with this technique text, it's actually affecting the mod wheel uh, in Contact Player. I'm actually running the full version of Contact because what it's what I like using. But I'm gonna bring up the mixer. Now if you click on this little cog here, uh, you would bring that up by going up to hitting VI. That's for the virtual instruments in the mixer. I'm going to bring this up. Let me select snare part first. I'm going to hit the P when I play it back. What I want you to do is check out down here. This is the mod wheel. I want you to see what it's actually doing. Right now it's more or less uh, kind of in the middle because it's at halfway, but you're actually going to see it go to three different positions as this plays back. So check it out. So as you can see at the very beginning, at the center, uh, or at the edge rather, it went up to the very top. That's because the edge value is 127 on the mod wheel. It can be anything from 0 to 127. And then it went to the center, back down to 0, and then to halfway. And I think halfway is somewhere in between 40-something uh, and 70-something. looks like it's closer to to 40 or 50 something. I forget the specific value. Uh, but that's kind of cool. Uh, prior to using... Sibelius 6 and Sibelius 5, you actually had to go in and uh, enter it's something along these lines. Enter a tilde to hide it, C1, 127. And that would actually make it play back at the edge. Fortunately, with, uh, with Sound World now, you don't actually have to do that anymore, so that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing that it can affect, for instance, with the, we didn't really go into it in detail, but if I was to have the tenors here, Go to Puffy's. This is actually doing what's known as a key switch. So I'm going to show you this one as well. Regular. All right. So I'm going to bring up my... Let's go to the tenor line instrument. You can see the little pink keys down here. It's like you're actually going to see a pink key pressed down when it plays back. All right, so as you can see, when it went to Puffy's, it actually pressed that key switch for you without you having to, to do that. And prior to that, you would actually have to enter the key switch yourself. I'm not going to show you how to do that because it's not really uh, too entirely important for the sake of this lesson. Um, but it's just pretty cool that, you know, it's nice and streamlined now, so that's pretty cool. Another little item, and this is something that comes up uh, semi-frequently with people, whether it be on our user forums, uh, or people with, uh, cont contacting me personally, uh, let's say that right here we have the uh, snare line guys playing on the rim. 
All right, so I'm gonna come in and type technique text. Let's go to create, text, technique. I'm gonna type rim. Check out what happens as I play this back. Unfortunately, I don't think I want the rest of this on the rim, but what this rim text does is actually somehow in the background, uh, whether it be through sound IDs or whatever, it actually triggers um, those rim sounds. So the way we combat that is select that text, then we're gonna bring up our properties menu, go back to the playback tab, and then here's our play on pass friend again. We just want to check that off. Now this text isn't actually going to have any playback effect. It's more or less just going to be there um, as a note to the performer. So now we can play it back and we'll get this. That was a nice little cue rim sound in there. All right, so uh, if you're ever having any weird playback issues, that's typically a good place to start. See if there's any text in there that's not standard technique text. Um, or dictionary text that can be found in the, the, I guess the diagrams, depending on which version of the template you're using, it might be in the README, might be in the diagrams, uh, which whenever you are dealing with this sort of thing, that's always a good place to check and see what kind of sounds are available and how to actually access those sounds. So that's it for this lesson. And the next one, we'll be working with adding some dynamics via expression text so we can finally pump some volume into this bad boy. We'll see you next time.